All right, the time has come. My early days of Oscar series is back. Between December 2021 and September 2022, I made a video about each of the first eight Academy Awards ceremonies, starting with Janet Gaynor versus Gloria Swanson in 1929. I explored Mary Pickford's suspicious Oscar win at the second ceremony, if Cimarron is really the worst Best Picture winner of all time, how Betty Davis crashed the Best Actress race in an unusual way for her performance in Of Human Bondage. I loved making all these videos, but then, yeah, the series went silent for a while, partly because I decided to put most of my focus on the 2023 award season for a few months. But in recent weeks, I realized how much I missed it. These fascinating stories about this enduring award show we all know and love, but from a much earlier time. In the last early days of Oscar video, I explored how Betty Davis finally won her Best Actress trophy for Dangerous, beating out Claudette Colbert, who had triumphed over her the year before for It Happened One Night. As I'm sure you know by now, I love my actresses, and it's the best actress category I tend to focus on in this series outside of there being a fascinating story elsewhere. So what was best actress like at the 9th Academy Awards in early 1937? Oh, it was a doozy, an incredible lineup of talent that reads like a who's who of classic movie stars. And at the center of the category was the true it girl of the time, Louise Reiner, who had just started her Hollywood acting career, moving to Los Angeles in 1935. She made one film that year, Escapade, co-starring William Powell, and then legendary producer Irving Thalberg chose Reiner to play the pivotal role of Anna in MGM's three-hour musical extravaganza, The Great Ziegfeld. The film went on to be a box office smash and critical darling, and it won the Oscar for Louise Reiner in the Best Actress category. Who was her competition that year? Did anyone have a chance at upsetting her? I would say superstar Norma Shearer had a very good chance for her performance in Romeo and Juliet, although not for the reason you might be expecting. My name is Brian Rowe, this is the Awards Contender, and in today's video I'm going to discuss the 9th Academy Awards and how Louise Reiner ultimately defeated Norma Shearer for the Best Actress Trophy. Before we dig into this category, let's explore the ceremony itself. The 9th Academy Awards took place on March 4th, 1937 at the Biltmore Hotel in Los Angeles and was hosted by George Jessel with music by the Victor Young Orchestra. This was the year that the awards for acting and directing were capped at five nominees per category and that finally the Best Supporting Actor and Best Supporting Actress categories were introduced. That's right, if you didn't know, in the first eight Oscar ceremonies, there were no supporting acting categories, better late than never, I guess, for the Academy to come to their senses. The first Best Supporting Actor winner was Walter Brennan for his performance in Come and Get It, a lumberjack drama directed by both Howard Hawks and William Wyler. This proved to be Brennan's first of three Oscar wins for Best Supporting Actor, making him the only actor in history thus far to win three Academy Awards in the supporting category, and only one of three male actors to win three gold trophies, Jack Nicholson and Daniel Day-Lewis being the others, of course. What a fascinating career this character actor had I might want to explore in an upcoming video. The first Best Supporting Actress winner was Gail Sondergaard for her debut performance in the epic historical drama Anthony Adverse, directed by Mervyn Leroy. She was a prolific actor in films for the next decade plus, during which she received a second Supporting Actress Oscar nomination for 1946's Anna and the King of Siam. Sadly, when her husband Herbert Biberman was accused of being a communist by the House Un-American Activities Committee, her film career stalled all the way until the 1970s. Sondergaard's career in movies and TV ended with mostly a whimper, unlike the very triumphant beginning she had with her Oscar victory for her villainous turn in Anthony Adverse. This film was one of the most celebrated at the 9th Academy Awards, receiving seven nods total, the most that year, and winning four prizes, Best Supporting Actress, Plus, Best Cinematography, Best Film Editing, and Best Scoring. The second film that year to receive seven Oscar nominations was Dodsworth, an incredibly compelling drama directed by William Wyler that won Best Art Direction and was recognized in Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor for Walter Houston. The third film to get seven Academy Award nominations that year was Robert Z. Leonard's The Great Ziegfeld, but more on that one in a minute. The classic screwball comedy My Man Godfrey might have only received six Oscar nominations, not seven, 
but it was the first to do something remarkable we only see here and there, and that has received nominations in all four of the acting categories. It's still the only movie to achieve this feat in Academy Awards history to not get a Best Picture nomination, which is crazy to me, given that in 1937, there were 10 Best Picture nominees. Like, they saw fit to give My Man Godfrey well-deserved nominations in all four acting categories and Best Director, but they couldn't find room for it in Best Picture? I mean, the screwball comedy libeled lady starring Jean Harlow got into Best Picture, but nowhere else. Like, what? Truly bizarre. Another big winner that night was the story of Louis Pasteur, a biographical drama about the scientist who developed major advances in microbiology. The film won Academy Awards for both Best Original Story and Best Screenplay, which seems a little fishy to me, I don't know about you. And it won Best Actor, Paul Muni beating out heavyweights like Gary Cooper, William Powell, and Spencer Tracy. This was Muni's only Oscar win in a fascinating career that netted him five Best Actor nominations across 30 years. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but this has to be the only time somebody was Oscar nominated for their first performance and their last performance, Muni getting into Best Actor for his 1929 film debut, The Valiant, and for his 1959 swan song, The Last Angry Man. And then the 1936 box office hit, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, also did well at the 9th Academy Awards, receiving five nominations, including Best Picture, and winning Best Director for Frank Capra. The beloved director of such films as Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and It's a Wonderful Life was very much adored by the Academy, winning the Best Director Oscar three times in the 1930s, the first for It Happened One Night, the second for Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, and the third for 1938's You Can't Take It With You. He would lose Best Director, funnily enough, for Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and It's a Wonderful Life. All right, now that takes us to Best Actress. Who was Louise Reiner's competition in early 1937? Let's start with Gladys George, who was nominated for a rare leading role in her career for her performance as a prostitute, and Valiant is the word for Carrie. This marked George's only Oscar nomination in a career that amounted to mostly supporting roles in such landmark projects as The Maltese Falcon and The Best Years of Our Lives. She was very prolific, acting in films from 1919 to 1953, and she was also an in-demand Broadway star as well. Next up is Irene Dunn, who was nominated for her first comedic role in Theodora Goes Wild about residents in a small town outraged by a risque novel. Were you raised in a small town by two maiden aunts? No. Have you taught Sunday school for the past 10 years? No. Have you played the organ in church since you were 15? No. Well, I have. Dunn was a titan in the industry, probably one of the best known actors of the time who never won an Academy Award. She was nominated five times in a career of more than 40 films, including Cimarron, Love Affair, and the comedy masterpiece, The Awful Truth. She probably came closest to a win for The Awful Truth, given that it was nominated for Best Picture and won the Best Director Oscar for Leo McCary. Plus, Dunn's closest competition in early 1938 was, who else, Louise Reiner. They weren't going to give Reiner a second win two years in a row, right? Oh, just you wait. But yeah, the year before, Irene Dunn had no chance at winning for Theodora Goes Wild, mainly because the Academy didn't fully embrace it only giving it one other nomination in film editing. Sadly, Dunn never took the gold trophy in her long and celebrated career, but that does mean one good thing here on the awards contender, an Irene Dunn elusive Oscar video, anyone? The third Best Actress nominee to talk about is Carol Lombard, who was one of the many actors recognized at the 9th Academy Awards for My Man Godfrey, a beloved comedy of the 1930s. Oh, Godfrey, I'm terribly sorry. That's all right. I never brought you here if I thought they were going to humiliate you. I'm terribly grateful. This is the first time I've ever beaten Cornelia at anything, and you helped me do it. I would say she had a better shot at victory than Gladys George or Irene Dunn because My Man Godfrey got into so many categories, including, as I said before, all four acting categories. Like, you would assume one of those actors had to win, but nope, My Man Godfrey went home with zero victories, and the huge Hollywood star Carol Lombard lost Best Actress in what turned out to be her only Oscar nomination. Lombard, whose flourishing career was cut short at just 33 years old when she died in a plane crash, is remembered today as the definitive actress of screwball comedy and an icon of 1930s and early 1940s cinema. All right, Louise Reiner, Louise Reiner, the moment has come. What is her story? 
And how did she become the frontrunner to take the Best Actress trophy for The Great Ziegfeld? Reiner began her acting career at age 16 in Germany, where she worked on the stage and received rave reviews, after appearing in a handful of German movies in the early 1930s, and MGM talent scout Phil Berg saw her performance in the play Six Characters in Search of an Author and offered her a three-year Hollywood contract. She moved to Los Angeles in 1935, where she appeared in the romantic comedy Escapade, opposite William Powell, after Myrna Loy gave up her role halfway through filming, Reiner was immediately hailed as the next big Hollywood star, and she was chosen for the real-life role of Anna Held in The Great Ziegfeld, where she acted once again opposite William Powell. Shot in the fall of 1935, the film is a fictionalized tribute to famed Broadway producer Florence Ziegfeld Jr. Oh, I'm so glad for you, Flo. Sounds funny for ex-husband and ex-wife to tell each other how happy they are we. <laughs> now famed movie producer Irving Thalberg felt that Reiner was the only actor in his studio roster who could play Anna. Her co-star Powell said of Reiner, she is one of the most natural persons I have ever known. Moreover, she is generous, patient, and possesses a magnificent sense of humor. Following the film's world premiere in March 1936, The Great Ziegfeld earned nearly $5 million worldwide, a massive number at the time that resulted in a profit of close to $1 million. Most reviews were through the roof, many critics calling it the greatest musical biography Hollywood had ever made, Otis Ferguson in New Republic saying, the musical numbers seem as irresistible as Ziegfeld himself, and Frank S. Nugent in the New York Times noting that the film had more stars than there are in the heavens. As I mentioned earlier, The Great Ziegfeld received seven Oscar nominations, and it won three, including Best Dance Direction and The Biggie, Best Picture. One person who didn't think she was going to win Best Actress? Louise Reiner, of course. Even though she was in a blockbuster hit that received tons of nominations, on the evening of the 9th Academy Awards, Reiner stayed home. Who would Reiner might have thought she'd lose to? One very formidable competitor, I would say, is the last Best Actress nominee to talk about, the iconic Norma Shearer, for her performance in the 1936 adaptation Romeo and Juliet from director George Cukor, in which he played Juliet, if you can believe it, and Leslie Howard played Romeo. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say goodnight. Now the film was only modestly successful, earning $2 million worldwide, receiving mixed reviews from critics, although it did get four Oscar nominations, not just Best Actress, but also Best Art Direction, Best Supporting Actor for Basil Rathbone, and Best Picture. That picture nomination certainly helped her chances, but I would argue Norma Shearer had the best chance of overtaking Louise Reiner that year for two main reasons. First, Shearer was Hollywood royalty, one of the biggest stars of the time that the Academy adored. Like, adored with a capital A. In the 1930s, she had a remarkable run of six Oscar nominations, all in the Best Actress category. Shearer was the first person ever to receive five Academy Award nominations for acting. Now, she did win the Best Actress trophy on her second nod for The Divorcee, so it's not like in 1937 she was overdue. She had won a trophy before. In taking this award, I feel I'm sharing it with the directors and the writers and the fellow actors whose encouragement made possible whatever degree of success I may have attained. But she'd lost for A Free Soul and The Barretts of Wimpole Street in the years prior to Romeo and Juliet, so a second victory certainly wasn't out of the question. I would say the second and most important reason Norma Shearer might have been a threat to Louise Reiner at the 9th Academy Awards was the sympathy vote she likely received after the sudden death of her husband Irving Thalberg, one of the most influential film producers of the time. Soon after the release of Romeo and Juliet, Thalberg died of pneumonia in a Santa Monica home on September 14, 1936. Condolences came from all over, Louis B. Mayer, David O. Selznick, and President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who said, The world of art is poorer with the passing of Irving Thalberg. His high ideals, insight, and imagination went into the production of his masterpieces. Thalberg's now widow, Norma Shearer, said, Grief does very strange things to you. I didn't seem to feel the shock for two weeks afterwards. Then at the end of those two weeks, I collapsed. So yeah, kind of like how Elizabeth Taylor mainly won her Oscar for Butterfield 8 in 1961 due to the sympathy vote of her near-fatal illness at the time of voting, I would think that Shearer's devastating loss of her husband Irving Thalberg, who everybody idolized and loved in the industry, 
might have netted her some sympathy votes from Academy members just a few months after his untimely passing, the mix of her strong performance in Romeo and Juliet, the Best Picture nomination, the Academy's love for Shearer, and the sadness over her personal loss might have earned her a second Best Actress trophy, it would make sense to me, honestly. She went to the ceremony on the arm of Louis B. Mayer, making her first public appearance since her husband's death. However, it wasn't meant to be for Norma Shearer. It was Louise Reiner, of course, who was announced as the Best Actress winner at the 9th Academy Awards. Why did Reiner win over Shearer? First off, I have to mention this. Shearer in Romeo and Juliet is a 34-year-old playing a 16-year-old, and that's something that possibly turned off some Academy voters. And then Reiner had tons of things going for her. She won Best Actress from the New York Film Critics. Her movie The Great Ziegfeld was one of the most celebrated of Oscars night, winning Best Picture. She was the new it girl in the industry. I think that played a big part too. And in The Great Ziegfeld, she gives a grandiose emotional performance of the highest order, one highlighted by a crucial scene in which her character makes a phone call to her ex-husband to congratulate him about his new marriage, then cries and cries. Reiner really was always winning this one, even though she's only in about 40 minutes of the three-hour film. Hey, if Anthony Hopkins can win Best Actor for The Sounds of the Lambs with 16 minutes of screen time, Reiner can absolutely win Best Actress with 40. Now, as I've mentioned, when Louise Reiner won her first Best Actress trophy for The Great Ziegfeld, she was at home, nowhere near the flashy ceremony. But this wasn't a Christine Lottie or Renee Zellweger in the bathroom situation at the Golden Globes where someone stands on the stage not knowing what to do. Back in the mid-1930s, the Academy announced all the winners to the press three long hours before the awards were actually given out, so there was time to get someone to the ceremony if need be. When MGM co-founder Louis B. Mayer learned Reiner had won, he sent the studio's publicity head Howard Strickling to her home to bring her to the Biltmore Hotel Pronto to receive her trophy and take some publicity stills and video. A little bit of that has survived, and oh, does Reiner appear awkward here, pretending to receive her Oscar for the first time from a variety of different angles. And so, Miss Reiner, we present you with this award for the finest acting during the year of 1936 in the picture, The Great Ziegfeld. Thank you very much. I'm very happy that I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but as you'll come to learn in the next early days of Oscar video, Louise Reiner would have to get comfortable accepting Oscar trophies because the following year she was nominated for Best Actress again for 1937's The Good Earth, and she won, again, making her the first person in history to win back-to-back -back Oscar trophies. How in the world was she triumphant again so soon? Who was her competition in the category that time? And why the hell, after winning two Academy Awards in just two years, did Louise Reiner quickly thereafter abandon Hollywood? Get ready, part two of the Louise Reiner Oscar story is coming. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below who you think should have won Best Actress at the 9th Academy Awards. Was Louise Reiner the right choice for the great Ziegfeld? Or should Norma Shearer or someone else in the category have taken it? We'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.